Metroid Zero Mission. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Metroid Zero Mission Extra episode. Where uh, yeah, today we'll be uh, checking all the extras that this game has to offer for us. So, so first uh, let's hop into my uh, test save file, which I was using before actually recording this uh, whole let's play. So, um. Uh, you see, our save file is colored yellow now, that means that we are in time attack mode, and uh, if you complete a certain mode in the game, as you can see we have three modes in this game, easy, normal, and hard, they are also colored yellow. Technically speaking, everything that you completed in this game is colored yellow. So so let's uh, hop into this save file. This is actually almost identical save file which I was using in my Let's Play. As you can see, if you complete the game and if you hop into your save file, you start right before the final boss, in the last save point. And uh, yeah, when you complete the game one time, then uh, you have some uh, extra features there in your map screen where you can see your time and you can see all the items that you collected or you haven't collected. So, And for the reason, this time attack save file, you can't copy it. I don't know why. <laughs> But that's how it works. Basically, if your save file is colored yellow, then you can't copy it for whatever reason. So basically what you have to do, you have to complete this time attack mode. Then you have to start the game normally, like I did right now. And then the save file will be colored white, again like it was before, like normally. And then you can copy it. So, And yeah, you may have already noticed that uh, next to my save file there was a... Uh, green Samus symbol next to it, which just denotes that, uh, well, the game has been complete, so. And regarding the hard mode, um, as you can see, in the beginning when you start the game, only two modes are available to you, easy mode and normal mode, but to unlock hard mode, you actually have to beat the game only on normal mode, not on easy mode though, only on normal, so that's, uh, yeah, what you have to uh, remember. And as you can see, our, uh, yeah, save file is normal now, it's colored in white numbers, and you can actually copy this save file, because it's not uh, time attack mode, so, <laughs> yeah, that's kinda weird. So we um, reset the game by using uh, start, select, and A plus B buttons, so this is the combination that you should use if you want to reset the game in-game, so. So to actually access time attack mode, as you can see, you can't uh, access it for the reason if you're save file is just normal save file, not in time attack mode. So to actually access it, you have to press up, left, right, and down. Whenever there is this start game option for you, so yeah, you enter that combination and then you can, uh, well, actually play time attack mode. So, and to actually unlock this option to play time attack, you have to beat the game one time. It doesn't matter which mode it is, you just have to beat it and then you can enter that combination. So so now we are hopping into my actually perfect save file where I got everything because I did not do that in my uh, test save file. So yeah, now I'll be able to actually show completely everything that this game has to offer. All the endings and all the other bonus stuff. And there are quite a few bonus features in this game. And yeah, most of them are really, really interesting. So. And also one thing in regards to time attack mode, the game mode is automatically set to normal when you play time attack mode. Basically you can't choose difficulty there, so. But yeah, let's check options. As you can see we have this sound feature here, so you can switch between, I think, stereo mode or mono mode. But uh, technically speaking, in this game how it works is just that if you choose that left Game Boy Advance icon, then the game sound is kind of louder to you, but if you choose headphones icon, then the game sound is uh, not so loud. So here we have a sound test feature. This sound test feature is only available to you if you complete the game on hard mode. So, and yeah, here we can uh, basically listen to all the tracks, well, not all of the tracks in the game, but almost all the tracks. For example, the track which plays when you uh, are fighting Mother Brain, for whatever reason, does not appear here, I don't know why, but technically speaking, yeah, almost all the soundtrack is available to you here, and uh, you can uh, listen to it here, so there's yeah, some really awesome tunes in this uh, game, so I really advise you to listen to all these tracks, most of them are, uh, yeah, just perfect, really, so, and also interesting thing about the sound test mode, so you can just 
place one track here, let it play out, and uh, yeah, it uh, will play in this whole options menu. So basically you can view gallery and the track which you uh, uh, want it to play will play out when you are viewing the gallery. So. <laughs> As you can see, our uh, gallery option in this menu is colored yellow, which means that we got all eight endings in the game, and uh, oh man, yeah, it was uh, quite a trip, seriously. So yeah, I got everything, finally. I never knew that I would um, yeah, complete all the challenges that this game has to offer. So yeah, it was uh, quite a interesting experience, I have to say, so... <laughs> well... Technically speaking, we could complete the game even with less items than 15, but uh, I'll talk about that a bit later. Uh, so. so, you see, we have this time attack records feature here. So these time attack records are only available to you here if you complete uh, time attack mode one time. So basically, if you complete uh, time attack mode uh, any percent, you have one time here, your best time. And if you complete time attack 100%, you also have your time here, best time for 100%. That's why in my Let's Play, if you remember, there were uh, there was this uh, new record. So basically that means that I played time attack mode and, uh, well, that my previous time got beaten with my new playthrough. So, <laughs> And uh, there were also some kind of uh, passwords and IDs. I don't know what they are for. I heard somewhere that they are there for, well, some kind of contest that was held in Japan, but basically what you have to know that now it's not viable anymore. And here we can view our gallery feature. Yeah, give me that ass. I want that ass. I want that delicious ass. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, here we can view all the endings that we got uh, in this game, and um, yeah, as you can see, I'm kind of feeling that I'm, well, browsing through Playboy magazine or something, like, for real. <laughs> yeah, you can also scroll down to take a closer look uh, of these uh, pictures, because usually when you are just uh, browsing through this gallery, then by default, pictures are uh, scrolling from... Uh, down position upwards so but uh, if you want to take a closer view delicious ass you know then you can uh, well scroll backwards so to speak <laughs> yeah, as you can see endings they are just screenshots of samos and uh, yeah whenever you beat the game and uh, fulfill certain uh, requirement to unlock a certain ending then that ending is added to the screen and if you are curious about the um, ending requirements that there are in this game, well, here are these ending conditions, uh, which I yeah, took actually from the official uh, guide, official strategy guide for this game. So basically, uh, ending number one, technically speaking, is uh, the easiest ending to get, and ending number eight is the hardest uh, ending to get. So, as you can see in this chart, you actually don't have to play easy mode at all, because you can get ending number one on normal mode and the hard mode as well. So, yeah. So, some really nice challenges uh, that you have to complete to um, get all these endings. Uh, so, yeah, if you truly enjoy the game, then um, go for it, really. And this next slide is, uh, well, slide of all the endings so that you can see which number is which ending so to speak so basically i added numbers to these endings so that you can uh, view the previous slide and uh, yeah so that you can know uh, which ending you want to get you know so as you can see in uh, ending number one samus is uh, in her suit fully armored in ending number two, she takes off her um, helmet. In ending number three, well, she's without her suit and her uh, zero suit, with that delicious ass, you know. And uh, yeah, ending number four was the ending that we actually got in this let's play, 100% ending on normal mode, where uh, Samus actually wears her classical 
suit that she had in very first Metroid game. So, same goes for ending number 5, only there she is in some kind of bar, and uh, I don't know what is that person there. Maybe the last remaining Chozo or something? And uh, yeah, apparently Samus is playing board games with him at the bar or something. Ending number 6 is uh, also where we can uh, take a closer view of uh, that delicious ass of Samus. And uh, yeah, there's uh, some kind of city in the background as you can see, and also some uh, really bright moon as well. <laughs> Ending number 7, also Samus, but now she is uh, in her spaceship. And yeah, still looking sexy like always, so yeah, in her uh, classical attire. And uh, of course, we also have here ending number 8, which is uh, the hardest ending to get, where we have uh, yeah, Samus in her classical attire and also Samus in her uh, suit mode. And we also have there some kind of dust, flames, epicness in the background, <laughs> guns. And uh, yeah, so these are all the endings that you can get um, in this game. So remember how I told you that this game can actually be complete uh, with less than 15 items? Well, here's the proof. Yeah, one more uh, picture that is taken from the official strategy guide. So as you can see, only 9 items in this game are required. So basically, um, here's the explanation why they are required. So first one, Morph Ball. Basically, you need Morph Ball to advance actually through the first screen in the game where you uh, acquire it. So basically, uh, yeah, you take the Morph Ball and then there will be a screen where you actually have to use it to proceed through the game. So, Missile Tank is needed for the red doors and that's pretty much it. Basically, without it, uh, without missiles, you won't be able to actually proceed through the game, so... <laughs> Normal bombs are also needed, because uh, if you remember, there was one screen when we got normal bombs. And, uh, well, there were a lot of these critters, these bugs that we had to destroy in order to advance forward, so... Power grip, uh, at first I thought that it's not needed, but actually it is needed, because um, in that screen in Norfair where you actually have to use power grip to proceed further, if you kinda cheese your way through that room, uh, eventually there will be... Uh, like this ball, you know, which is eaten by these parasite bugs. Basically, this ball will be there in front of you for whatever reason in that room. If you, for example, try to use your bomb jumps and just don't receive power grip and then you maybe think, hey, I can advance forward, but no, there will be this um, ball in front of you which will block your way and for whatever reason it will just disappear when you receive power grip. So, yeah. <laughs> So basically you need power grip in this game. Ice Beam, you need it to deal with Metroids, because if you remember, only Ice Beam can uh, deal with them. So basically you can't uh, deal damage to them when they are not frozen, so yeah, that's why Ice Beam is needed. Various suit technically is not needed at all, but uh, like I said before, when you receive Gravity Suit, when you receive your fully powered suit, then uh, Various suit, for whatever reason, is uh, being added to your... Uh, um, item screen, status screen, automatically, for whatever reason. So all three unknown items are needed. Uh, technically they're not needed uh, at all, but uh, if you remember, these three unknown items, they represent uh, plasma beam, gravity suit, and the space jump. So you technically don't need them, right? Kinda? But um, if you remember, when you receive all these uh, unknown items, you can't advance forward because, uh, well, you need to pick up these unknown items to break these flashing blocks, if you remember. Because, uh, yeah, all these three unknown items, you need them to break these flashing blocks to advance forward. So that's why they are here. So, uh, yeah, this strategy guide recommends here to pick up long beam, two energy tanks, and... Um, three super missile tanks, if you're going for 15% completion in this game. Um, I'm not too sure about that. Long beam, uh, it's technically not needed like at all. Well, the only thing that it does, it just extends the range of your beam. So I advise to pick up actually screw attack more, which will help you immensely in this game to deal with enemies. And uh, it will help you also immensely when you're fighting against mother brain. Also, uh, you could pick up Space Booster, 
which is uh, kind of optional, but um, it helps out only actually in one place, but it's pretty crucial when you're escaping through Turian sequence, because if you don't um, pick up speed booster, then you have to go the hard way and uh, you will have to use your very, very precise bomb jumps to go out of that place uh, to your ship. So, yeah. And also, before I move on, one thing that I forgot to mention about uh, these items here. So, uh, let me show you two clips. These clips are not mine, but um, yeah, just look and then we'll... Uh, discuss some things, okay? So here's the first clip. This is the clip of North American and Japanese versions of the game. As you can see, we are in Space Pirate Mothership. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, the next clip is actually of European version of this game. So, um, are you noticing some differences, maybe? Well, if you haven't noticed, then uh, let me tell you. So, as you can see, this footage is actually of a hard mode, and, uh, well, here on the screenshot you can see that uh, you can complete this game with uh, 9 items in this game, right? But uh, that actually changes depending on which version you are playing. So, um, in North American and the Japanese versions um, of this game, in that clip that I showed you in the first one, there were two missile blocks in that Space Pirate Mothership and they come back when you destroy them. So it means that you need free missiles to go through that place. So, so that means uh, on hard mode you need two missile tanks, not one, like the screenshot is telling you, because you see, on hard mode one missile tank gives you two missiles, not five, like in uh, normal mode. So technically you could also just be fine with screw attack because that upper part of that wall can be broken with uh, screw attack as well but um, it's the same thing you just need one extra item one extra either missile tank or screw attack so basically it's not nine percent then but ten percent you know i also heard that there's a missile door later that you must pass through and uh, before you can uh, uh, refill your ammo at the safe station so that's why you actually need uh, either two missile tanks or one missile tank and screw attack to uh, proceed through this place. I haven't tested it out myself, but that's what I heard, you know, so that you are aware. So in the second clip that I showed you, which was the European version of this game, uh, as you may already notice, uh, when we are shooting down these blocks with our missiles and when we are going out of this room and coming back, uh, these missile blocks, they do not respawn. So basically, if you destroy these missile blocks by using two missiles, by using uh, one missile tank, you can uh, go to the previous save point, refill your ammo, and then you can go through the game normally, because these two missile blocks won't be respawned anymore. So basically, yeah, on hard mode, you are fine with 9% here in European version. But in North American and Japanese versions, um, you yeah, can complete this game with 10%, which is the lowest percent that you can complete this game in. So, if you get the point. So yeah, these are uh, version differences, regional ones, that you should be aware of um, if you try to finish this game with the lowest item completion as possible. So. So here we have Metroid Fusion Link feature, which actually changes to Metroid Fusion Gallery, if you can make it work, that is. Uh, yeah, for whatever reason, I um, could not get it to work, because I'm playing on an emulator, and uh, you need a link cable for it, so basically you need uh, two Game Boy Advances in real life, and one link cable in <laughs> real life to link two Game Boys together where one Game Boy has a Metroid Zero Mission in it, and the other one has a Metroid Fusion in it. And if you do that, then you have access to all the ending screens from Metroid Fusion. And there are quite a few, because, um, you see, Metroid Fusion is pretty awkward game, region-wise, so um, there are a lot of endings which are, well, technically speaking, available only in certain regions, you know? But uh, here you can kind of view all of these uh, endings across all the regions in this gallery. 
So, because uh, Metroid Fusion, uh, to be honest, it didn't have gallery feature. It only had gallery feature um, in Japanese version, which is kind of awkward. I hate when uh, games do like that, you know, when they just provide some extra features which are only unlocked in some different version of the game. Kind of feels a bit racist to me, so... <laughs> So I wanted to actually uh, show you all the endings uh, from Metroid uh, Fusion here. But, you know, I am interested in Metroid Fusion and uh, I am uh, definitely interested in making a Let's Play of it someday as well. So I think I'll uh, keep these endings for later for Metroid Fusion so that I would have extra episodes, you know, for Metroid Fusion to show you all these endings. Because, yeah, to be honest guys, Metroid Fusion doesn't have too much features. So yeah, but in this uh, Metroid uh, Fusion uh, Gallery feature, which is here in Metroid Zero Mission, there are actually two uh, screens, uh, two screenshots, which are not available in Metroid Fusion. They can be only seen here, and uh, yeah, these two pictures are actually these ones. So we have, uh, yeah, this one picture to the left and the other one uh, to the right, as you can see, yeah. Here we have some uh, preview screens of uh, Metroid Fusion. To the left, as you can see, we have uh, Samus with her new Fusion suit. Uh, so, as you can see, Ridley is back in that game as well. Yeah, I like this picture to the left. It has this uh, comic book feel to it. And the picture to the right is a really, really awkward one. I still have no idea what the hell is that thing. But, uh... Apparently there were uh, made some kind of action figures or something. As you can see, to the left we have there Samus in her regular suit. But uh, to the right we have a Samus in her fusion suit. And uh, in the center we have a Metroid Baby? Uh, what? So, yeah. I don't know what is up with that picture. It kind of seems like a promotional picture or something. Uh, so... If you have uh, some more information about this picture, let me know, because uh, it kind of looks pretty silly to me, seriously. But yeah, I think this is the most awesome feature that this game has to offer. Original Metroid! So basically, yeah, in this game we can actually play the original Metroid. So basically, uh, this game is actually two games in one, so... And yeah, here we have a, well, pretty kick-ass translation, right? Yeah, original uh, didn't have a very uh, good translation here, so yeah, this translation sucked ass, so... <laughs> so original Metroid in this game is unlocked when you complete the game one time, and that's all you have to do. And then, uh, yeah, this uh, original Metroid feature in this game is um, available to you in the options screen. So yeah, this is a completely uh, original version when it was released on NES, uh, not too much changes here, it's completely uh, the same uh, thing, so to speak. But there is one uh, particular feature which I'll uh, show a bit later, which appears only um, in this version. So yeah, back to Prince Star we go! <laughs> As you can see, even the music is, uh, yeah, staying truthful to the original. So uh, I originally did not want it to show this uh, mode too much, because, um, well, the whole game is here, so basically this whole game requires you to have a different Let's Play, which I'll, I think, make um, in the future. But, um, yeah, at first I just wanted to show a bit of a gameplay in this mode. But um, then I decided to play around here a bit more, because this game is um, awesome, this mode is awesome, and, uh, yeah, left this whole footage of this original Metroid in. Because, uh, so that you can see how truthful this whole remake that we played uh, in this whole Let's Play is to the original. Although, I have to say that original game looks very, very cryptic. Even for a time when it was released originally, uh, well, it did many, many things that uh, games back then did not do. So, for example, these uh, secret passages. If you remember from Metroid Zero Mission that were almost in every room, well, they also appear here, and they are not so... kinda like obvious, like in Metroid Zero Mission. They were not obvious in Metroid Zero Mission, but here they are even less obvious, so to speak. So here things are even more cryptic 
And uh, yeah, controls are pretty stiff, everything is kept uh, like it was in original version. The lag is here as well, and stuff like that, so yeah. I think uh, this game is much more harder than um, Zero Mission, <laughs> simply because controls feel, yeah, very, very stiff, uh, so it's really hard to dodge enemies, and um, yeah, enemies deal a lot of damage to you. As you can see, you start with uh, not 100 health, but uh, with 30, I think it was, or something. Um, so yeah, you're kind of really, really handicapped here, so... <laughs> and you don't have a map here as well. So basically everything sucks, which uh, yeah makes this game um, appealing actually. So if you are, uh, well, maybe going for full challenge mode in this game, then you can try to complete uh, the original Metroid um, in Metroid Zero Mission as well. So you see we have this menu here. This is the feature which is only available in uh, this version of the game. Basically, uh, in uh, Metroid Zero Mission, in this original Metroid mode, and this is the uh, menu which is um, yeah, only available here. So, um, it's kind of like basic menu, it just lets you reset the game, quit the game, and stuff like that. And uh, that's pretty much it. But one more other feature that is only in this version of the game is when you yeah, die, then the game actually gives you password here. So this password can be entered in your um, password screen, and when you enter it, uh, considering this uh, original game, original Metroid, didn't have a save feature, so yeah, basically when you enter that password, then you are kinda reset not at the same point where you died, but, well, in this game we have kinda like checkpoints, so basically you are being restarted at the checkpoint with all the upgrades that you've collected so far. So... But yeah, that menu that I showed to you, it's pretty interesting because, um... You can, uh, use it whenever you want. You know, it acts kinda like your... boss screen, only you can use it... on whatever screen you want in this original uh, Metroid here, so... <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can access that uh, menu by pressing L plus R at the same time. So, so here's our uh, password um, screen. So let's enter a different password. So I'll uh, be entering now password, which uh, is a uh, yeah pretty cool one, and uh, which uh, lets me play with. Uh... Yes, give me that ass. That's right. With Samus in her suitless mode, original suitless mode. So, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool, so I like it. So basically, yeah, this password lets you play with uh, Samus Suitless 1 uh, without all the upgrades and stuff like that. As you can see, yeah, we uh, started at the beginning of the game. So basically, if you don't want to play with a suit on, and if you want to enjoy that delicious booty, then you can just enter this password and play through the whole game. Uh, suitless. So, so let's play around with these passwords a bit more. Honestly, guys, this game has a million passwords. I'm not even kidding, because you see, the game says here that, uh, well, we are entering password, but we are actually entering passcode. And what that means is that each password in this game... It's kind of like randomly generated, if it makes sense, because the passwords in this game, or I should say passcodes, uh, they actually, um, well change the game code in some ways. So there is uh, also this passcode generator for this game, which uh, yeah has uh, more than a million passwords, and each password uh, lets you play, well, game kinda differently. So for example, this Justin Bailey password, which is uh, yeah, a classical password which is known to almost anyone, uh, lets you play with Suitless Samus, which has some of her upgrades with her here, as you can see, and uh, yeah, we um, start at Norfair for whatever reason, so... So basically that's how these passwords work, and um, for example, there's a password where you can start at the same place but only with one upgrade, where you can start in the same place with all upgrades and stuff like that. So basically that's why I say that there are a million passwords, because um, each password uh, kinda manipulates game code in a certain way. So, 
Yeah, I remember when I was uh, playing this game when I was a kid, I didn't knew what I was doing like at all. I couldn't go through the first screen like at all because this game just kicked my ass and I was an idiot. And uh, yeah, even now this game still kicks my ass. It's a pretty hard game. As you can see, yeah, we have a lot of upgrades here, even screw attack. And um, remember how I told you that, um, well, this game is very, very cryptic? Look at this secret passage. How could you know that there is a secret passage here back then? Like, seriously. Yeah, this game is, um, really, really awesome. Back when it was released, uh, it did uh, many, many things differently that um, games back then were not doing at that time, so yeah. We also have this fucking sleep feature here, which is kinda completely optional and not needed on an emulator at all, so... <laughs> so yeah. And uh, let's go back, because um, I like passwords. They're awesome. And sometimes these passwords, they, uh, well, considering they are randomly generated, uh, sometimes when you enter real words, which are in real life, they will give you some uh, interesting results. So, for example, now we'll be entering uh, also one password, which is known <laughs> by classical game enthusiasts. Well, yes, you know what password will be coming up here. Nope, not I, not Ridley, but uh, Ridley. And yeah, the other part you also know. So basically this password uh, works differently considering which version of the game you are playing, but uh, technically speaking it just breaks the game. Only in each version it breaks the game differently. So I wonder what it does in this version of the game, in this uh, Zero Mission version. So yeah, engage Ridley. Well, you know how this part goes. Mother... Yep. But yeah, apparently uh, in this version of the game it just, well, transfers you back to the first screen for whatever reason, so... <laughs> but yeah guys, this will be it for this whole let's play, so hopefully you enjoyed these extras, hopefully you enjoyed this whole uh, playthrough. So uh, yeah, in case I missed something, uh, well, like I mentioned before, I have 15% playthrough of this game on hard mode, so basically everything that I haven't mentioned is seen in that playthrough. So if you are curious, go watch it, but uh, yeah, for now, see you all in the next mission. Cheers.